do not quit your job, quit your life, quit your whatever, and leave everything else behind in order to become a crypto trader, crypto investor, whatever might you be. Anyways, with that said, welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, continuing with the psychological series today. I wanted to address something that I have been getting hit up with a lot recently, and it typically goes something along the lines of this. Hey, Crown, uh, I've made X amount of life-changing money, and I am now considering becoming a crypto trader full-time and quitting my job and leaving everything else behind, and this is what I want to do. I feel really, really strong about this. I know I, I know I can do it, and I'm, 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 I'm going to make the jump, man. What do you think? Well, first off, if you're asking someone else, what do you think? Probably not too confident on your own to begin with. The point is, is that, hey, we are in one of those very special times right now. One of those very special times where everything and their goddamn mother within the crypto space gets to go to the moon and maybe even beyond to Mars and some other galaxy as well. Now, with that said, and before we go a little bit deeper into this, I want to first and foremost say, look, I am not trying to dissuade anyone from doing something that might bring them greater success. Of course not. That is a really, really dastardly thing to do. And I look strongly down upon that. Also importantly, I do sincerely wish anyone who does that extremely well, because if anyone has any you know, sense within them, they know that wishing other people well in whatever endeavor that they're looking to do, as long as it's, you know, like, like altruistic in some sense is, uh, you know, is, is going to come back to you. And that is the right thing to be uh, thinking. Anyways, more importantly, and on the topic, the reason why I'm bringing this out is because that old saying certainly does apply here. Do not confuse brains with a bull market. And we are in one of those very special times right now where everything and their mother is going to the moon and it really does not take much of a skill in order to be making paper profit unrealized profits most importantly in a market like this right now even with realized profits it is more or less going to be a function of what you can hold on to once the market inevitably turns around or even goes sideways for some time as well that is where the true test does indeed lie and look again i'm not trying to dissuade anyone who is making money right now look i'm more than happy for you again way more than happy for you i feel like that definitely deserves repeating my point here is as we get a little bit deeper into this video is that please 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 consider that this is a long 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 game this is certainly a marathon not a sprint or a sprint of or a marathon of sprints uh with a lot of interludes in between perhaps especially in this space which is you know moves rather fast anyways again back on point here as we kind of just take a perusal of the charts I do want to reference the last few cycles within this market, of course, if we go to our Bitstamp chart over here, we can see that, of course, things don't just always go straight to the moon every goddamn day. In fact, a lot of the time, things are just more or less going sideways. But within the last 11 or 12 years of Bitcoin's uh, operating history, and of course, the other, um, the other altcoins essentially fall under the same sort of rule to maybe even a more emotional extent, we do see these absolutely catastrophic and very, very nasty drops of which we can just look at the last one, which was your 2017 to 2018 high all the way down to your 2019 low. That's an 84% drop down right there. We see this one over here from 2014 through 2015, another 87% drop down almost. In 2013, we had a lovely 75% down and, and throughout all these uh, sessions anyways, we've seen plenty of very, very nasty downturns. Even within the context of a bull market, we've seen several moves in the past even of even of recent times where we do see 30 to 40 percent dropbacks and you know we can measure them all here we've done this plenty of times on this channel but i just want to bring your attention to this because right now is that exuberant time and one and, and a bunch of stories from 2018 really stand out to me and why i really wanted to bring up this video now in the heat of this bull market which admittedly i don't think is any right now i don't think it's any like this month i don't think it's any maybe not even this year it could go on for a little bit longer certainly yes what i want to bring in the conversation though is that inevitably this will turn around and so if you are the kind of person considering that please 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 i would strongly suggest staying in whatever you're currently doing and trading crypto on the side if you can until you've gone through a full cycle at least the reason being because <laughs> until you actually experience one of these for yourself in real time while actually having skin in the game in the market it is just not going to register emotionally speaking and it is while and while it is a great experience to actually go through this because it will prime your emotions and those will be useful to you in the future as i'm sure a lot of people from 2017 to 2018 can certainly attest to until you actually have those experiences you'll never have a reference point for that and you'll always be essentially untested in that way now, of course, it would be naive of me to say that that's going to be true for everyone. Of course, there's going to be some people, you know, a very small percent who are going to be successful 
you know, even if they jump it today and just stick it out and all good. Hey, more power to you. But again, I'm speaking to the majority here. And if you are just getting this market, if you are just getting into trading, if you are just learning about cryptocurrencies in whatever form, I would strongly suggest just giving it time. There is absolutely no reason to jump into this uh, as fast as possible. You can obviously make money on the side, especially, uh, you know, during times like this while holding a somewhat normalish job, perhaps you might not sleep all that well, but hey, you know, sacrifices must be made. My point is, is that, hey, if you, if you are thinking that you are that type of person, there is no need, no need at all to do, to actually do that. Just keep in mind with the market. And then over time, you'll naturally gravitate towards it because you'll feel more and more comfortable. You'll feel, you'll feel more and more opportunity and you will feel like you actually understand what the hell is going on. And you can more importantly, hold on to the money that you do make during these very forgiving and generous times that we're witnessing right now. That is the real skill within this game. When the market does turn around, it is going to be a game of how much do you actually get to keep? Now, as a professional trader, do I, do I expect to keep everything from a bull market into a bear market? No. In fact, actually, I, I prefer to trade a bear, to bear to, I, I prefer to trade a bear market, to be honest with you. But my point is, is that, you know, the real skill for a lot of people right now is going to be what can you actually realize from this market? Because it is very, 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 very easy to get caught up within the motions of what we've been seeing for the past five, six months now. And as you can see, the target is never is never high enough. And as soon as Bitcoin gets to, you know, a crazy level like 50,000 bucks, people are no longer talking about 50,000 bucks. They're not they're not they're not talking about 100,000 bucks. And when 100,000 bucks becomes a little bit played out emotionally, then people start talking about five hundred thousand dollars. When people get tired of that, they start talking about a million dollars. My point is, is that all of those are always going to be constantly shifting in the times of sands or the sands of time. And, uh, and, and again, it's a little bit uh, deceptive in the way that the news media kind of covers this, especially on, you know, crypto Twitter and crypto YouTube and crypto Reddit. There's definitely some good actors in there. Absolutely. But when people keep on talking about these really, 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 really egregious targets, which might get hit over time understand that they're playing a bit of a different game. They're playing a game where they know that they will get the most viewers if they start to really put out these incredibly interesting targets. I mean, incredibly just far out targets that people start to fantasize about. They start to think about how their life could change if, you know, Bitcoin hit a million dollars and you have, I don't know, half a fucking Bitcoin. And you're like, oh my God, I can finally make a down payment on a house or whatever, you know, in like San Francisco because it's expensive there. Anyways, my point is, is that, <clears throat> is that that while it could be true over time you know i've, I've definitely uh, I, I definitely do think that bitcoin has significant uh, potential long term it doesn't mean that it has to necessarily happen today and i do see a lot of people getting carried away by the emotions of this market particularly and in this very environment a lot of people are actually jumping out of their current jobs of their current life to join this market thinking that that is going to you know going to continue on for forever and at the end of the day, unless you've actually experienced a shift in the macro environment, it is going to be, it is going to rock you like a fucking hurricane. I'm sure that a lot of people in this channel here who have been around since 2017 and 2018 can attest to that. I know for the people who've been around for 2014 to 2015, they were telling the people in 2016, 2017, the exact same thing that I'm telling you right now. Now, for myself, I had a lot of training in traditional markets before I even came over here, but in traditional markets, I joined when it was basically straight up. I mean, I basically joined like a little bit after uh, what's it called uh, the 08 crisis right and everything's just been pretty much vertical since so I you know I've gone through a little bit of that myself when I first started trading albeit in a different market anyways back on topic here as far as Bitcoin goes I would say that if you are truly the type of person who's interested in learning trading in learning investing in learning cryptocurrency whatever it is about the space you can always do it on the side find some 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 source of information or maybe even multiple sources of information just people who are where you want to be at at some point in time you know essentially some, some sort of like a model of where you want to be follow them and you can keep in tune with them during this learning process during this learning time and understand the mentality of the learner which we all go through when we learn something new in this case with trading that means you know it's usually going to take on average about a year maybe maybe even two years in some cases for for the slower learners of which i consider myself to be a slower learner it took me a longer time to learn trading and be consistent with it uh, and I was even tutored by, or tutored, I was even mentored by, you know, one of the most experienced traders in the world at the time too. 
So it is really, 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 really important to kind of reflect upon that fact. And I'm sure if those people who you look up to, if they have any sense or if they actually are who they say they are, they're probably going to tell you something relatively similar in the sense that, hey, you know, this is going to take a while if you really do truly want to learn this as a skill. This is not the best environment to be learning right now. Not that it's a bad environment and experience is an experience. We shouldn't really judge it, whether uh, positive nor neutral. But at the same time, we should be very aware of what of where we are within the greater scale of things. And this is, you know, a part of trading, but this is not the whole trading. This is certainly one of the easier parts, I would say. And, uh, and, and and again, at the end of the day, what you take home is what you actually fucking take home. And that's the real skill here is like judging when the market actually does reverse because it will. It will at some point in time. I don't think it's happening anytime soon or at least, you know, not within like the next month or two. We can't really think too much further off, off of that, barring any sort of like a natural circumstances going on, which, hey, knock on wood can definitely happen. I'm sure everyone's opinions on that have changed around since 2020. But again, going back to the topic here, you know, if you were to, let's say, if, if we were to like kind of set up like a roadmap on how to learn trading, for example, as this channel is focused on trading after all, um, in the context of whatever market, it doesn't really matter, but you're coming at it from the perspective of what I imagine most people who well, who are interested in this would be coming from. It's like you hold a regular somewhat or somewhat regular job, you know, like a nine to five type of schedule, um, you know, Monday through Friday. And, you know, you that's like your main priority. That's your main commitment. That's what pays your bills. That's what pays all of the, you know, all the stuff that you need on a day to day basis, like your food, your housing, all that good stuff. And then during that time, you will have at least a few hours a day to put into learning whatever it is that you might. If it's trading, put it into that use your time wisely. We all get 24 hours in the day. That is the great equalizer. No one gets any more, no one gets any less. We need about seven to eight hours of sleep every night. I know that some people might push back on that statement. That's what. That's just what I found true for myself. If I don't get eight hours of sleep, I do not think properly and I do not trade well, more importantly as well. So those are essentially set away on that daily time for many ways. And then of course, you know, you got your nine to five. So what is that eight hours of work? All right, so that's about eight plus eight. We got 16 hours done, boom, those ones are gone. But fear not, there's eight more hours. And you know, maybe you go to the gym, maybe you have a family, maybe you do all that stuff. Maybe you cut off another like two, three hours off that. It still gives you, still gives you a fair bit of time, about five hours, right? Uh, let me just make sure that I'm doing my math, my math, work, my math right. Work eight hours, uh, sleep eight hours. That's sixteen. All right, so that leaves us with eight. We say another three hours for like commu uh, commuting, uh, I don't know, gym, eating, whatever the fuck. Uh, then what you got five hours left within the day okay not bad you can definitely do a lot of damage with that let's do a little bit of an analysis with this if you have five hours of free time a day and then on the weekends you got very likely much much more assuming that you don't you know go out and i wouldn't say i was almost going to say waste your time out on the weekends but look you know when i was in my early 20s i definitely did a lot of that no doubt even into my mid and later 20s a bit as well but <laughs> Fun times, you know, you should definitely do, you should get, definitely get it out of your system because what you want to be is you want to be at the point mentally where it's almost as if you realize that is taking you further away from where you want to be than, uh, than just like focusing on what you actually want to do. So in that case, you know, weekends, you probably have more time. Let's just say that, you know, you could reasonably invest like eight to 10 hours on the weekend, treat it as like a real job at that point. So on a week to week, or yes, on a weekly basis, you could invest how many hours into actually learning? Well, five times five, that's, that's your, that's your weekday. So that's 25 hours on the weekends. Let's just say you, you do eight hours each day. Okay. That's so, so that's 16 plus 25. That's going to be what? That's going to be uh, 41, right? I think <laughs> bad math right now. <laughs> Didn't sleep too well last night myself. Actually, it's way too late here. Anyways, 41 hours. Let, let's just round that. Let's just say 40 hours a week. Okay. 40 hours a week. Well, it is one of those like facts of nature that we get, get better at things that we're just more familiar with, that we're more accustomed to assuming that we do have, you know, the proper information, which that's just, you know, that's a whole another topic of course on YouTube. But if we go through it at that lens, what statistically has been shown by studies to produce, you know, competence, competency in some sort of a skill? Well, actually about a thousand hours of concerted practice, you should start to get pretty damn good. Now, with that said, where do you technically become professional, at least from like a very elite perspective? Technically speaking, 10,000 hours. You actually will find that. I'll reference the book Mastery by not Robert uh, Greene, this one. This one is by, uh, fuck, George Leonard, I think it is. Could be wrong in that name. I read it a while ago, and it's been a while since I've actually reread it, to be honest with you as well. 
but somewhere around 10,000 hours, the book definitely is called Mastery, however. It's not the one by, by Robert Greene, and welcome to a new friend. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> that's if you want to become a true professional. And we're talking about like, you know, elite, elite levels. We're talking about, you know, elite, uh, like uh, athlete type levels, but at whatever skill that you do apply. That's typically where they start to like really reach their, you know, so-and-so peak. But again, do you need to get there in order to learn this? No, you're on the path to there. And probably by around hour 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, you're pretty fucking proficient. You're probably profitable by that time. You're probably very comfortable as well. So how long would that take if you are investing 40 hours per week? Well, you got 40 hours per week. Uh, again, that's rounding. You know, maybe you could do a little bit more. Maybe you sneak some videos in while you're at your nine to five jobs. That's actually what, that's actually a really good <laughs> thing to be doing, especially if you're, you know if you're doing some sort of a mindless job where you can get away with that. Um, but like, but again, just forty hours a week. Okay, let's say. Uh, so how, you know, how much are we going to get done in ten weeks? That's going to be four hundred hours. That's not even a year. How much are we going to get done in twenty weeks? That's going to be almost. That's going to be eight hundred hours. Not bad. Uh, how, we, how, how much can we get done in a year, basically? Well, there's 50, 52 weeks in a year, so let's just round it to 50 because I'm doing this all in my head. So 50 times 40 is what? That's, well, 2,000. Pretty fucking good right there. You could reasonably learn this and reasonably get to a decent level, I believe, uh, in a year or two. Uh, now, again, I didn't do it in a year. It took me about a year and a half to two years, I'd say, um, with, with that sort of a schedule. But you need to maintain discipline. You need to make sure that you obviously have, you know, a decent source of information, which you'll naturally sort of gravitate to or over time. You know, you need to be doing all of the, you know, all of the, um, you know, all, all the small things, of course, which we allude to on this channel as well. But most importantly, you need to fucking put in the hours and showing up in that way, just looking at the charts, you're going to naturally become familiar with things and start to notice things that that will play into whatever edge that you eventually do choose. So going back on it right now, that with that sort of a schedule, could you reasonably learn something like this within, you know, with, within a couple of years? Yeah, I do think so. And that's why I say even with a nine to five job, it's really not a wise idea to just jump into this market at this exact moment right now when you really haven't been tested in what will inevitably happen and what is rather difficult to trade into. I know it always looks easy in hindsight. I know it fucking does. Everyone always thinks, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God, I'm just going to buy and hold. It's like, okay, if you buy and hold, you have no exit strategy. What are you going to do? What are you fucking going to do when the market turns around? Because everyone always thinks that they're going to get out, get out right here. Or people even think that they might be reasonable and they'll be like, okay, well, maybe I'm not, my, I might not get the top, but I'll, but I'll realize it over here. I'll realize that, that Bitcoin's not, not going to the moon anymore. Like, no, um, you're probably going to be making excuses at the time, still holding down losses with the sunken cost fallacy, thinking that, oh, shit, well, I've already invested so much time holding this bitch. Might as well hold it for a little bit longer. You know, can't get too much worse. Well, guess what? A 90% drop is always a 90% drop, and a 90% drop from, from 20,000 bucks uh, can result in another 90% drop. And, you know, that, uh, well, obviously from the next price, obviously, you know, and that, that can definitely happen. And it does happen in a lot of altcoins, actually. Bitcoin, a little bit less so. I mean, for example, right here, you know, you think you've seen it all when, uh, after a couple months of the high comes down 70%. 70 fucking percent barely even looks like anything on the chart right now. 70 percent. Imagine 70 percent of your net worth of your wealth gone. <laughs> it's fucking gone, man. It's gone. Uh, and then you're like, oh, shit. OK, we're bouncing. This is good. But we just did 70 percent to the downside. There's no way this can go down anymore. No way that this can go lower, bro. And then what happens after that? Well, from next high to next low, there's another fucking 70 percent in your face. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, man. Brutal. Just <laughs> once again, the cocks put the gods put cock in ass, right? To quote Spartacus right there. Anyways, back on topic here. My point is, is that, hey, if you are if you are the type of person who is considering that, look, I want to actually I want to actually encourage you to go towards what you think is right for yourself. Only you can make that decision for yourself. Just keep this in mind and keep it and keep in mind that the less the least pressure that you put on yourself while learning this as a skill, the better you're going to be in a position later on. You really don't want to go through the old boom and bust cycle. You don't really you really don't want to go through ruin. That is something to be avoided and you don't need to. You don't need to risk any sort of, you know, you know, anything in that way before you actually learn the skills. And this, you know, could obviously, we could obviously bring into the conversation here too, that you can, you can always use demo accounts. You know, you can trade very low dollar amounts while you're learning. There should never be a risk of that. But again, we're speaking mostly towards people who are literally considering like dropping everything, you know, like a decent paying job or even, or even just any job, doesn't even matter. Any sort of form of stability in order to jump into the market right now, thinking that this is just normal. Well, 
I would strongly consider, I would strongly encourage you, one, to go after what you want, but two, consider that you can do this over time in what I would think is a safer manner. And when you are ready, jump in and you'll naturally gravitate towards that over time. In fact, I believe you have a video on this channel here, maybe even within this playlist, about when you know you are quote unquote ready. So with that said, I'll let you ruminate over those thoughts and perhaps I'll refine them better over time as well. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.